Hi, and welcome to another IoT Central Micro Session. If you have any questions, please ask them in the chat window below your screen. We will follow up with any unanswered question using the email address you registered with. My name is Clinton Odor from the Edge Impulse Developer Relations team. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about continuous classification. I will also walk you through a live demo demonstrating continuous classification using an Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense with an onboard microphone. Edge Impulse is the world's leading embedded machine learning platform. It helps you build a full end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline to accomplish a variety of ML tasks from regression, motion classification, sound classification, object detection, predictive maintenance, and many others. You can import data from any sensors and deploy your model to almost any device. You also maintain your IP, meaning that you retain control of the data and firmware of your model the whole time. The Edge Impulse Studio is an online platform that handles everything, including collecting data from your embedded sensors, labeling your data, performing any pre-processing calculations, and training your machine learning models. This end-to-end -end project is called an impulse. You can then test your impulse on live data with a connected sensor. After validating your models, the studio will then guide you through the process of creating a pre-compiled firmware or a library that will run your impulse on any types of development platforms. This includes your pre-processing code, train neural network, and any anomaly detection code you may have so that you can perform inference locally without the need of an internet connection. So let's start. What is continuous classification? Let's say you have built a Gantt sound detection model to prevent poaching in the savanna. Then you just realize that one elephant was shot down dead and the gun shot sound went unnoticed by your system, even though your system was always on. In this case, your system might be probably working on an uncontinuous mode, where the device captures raw audio samples until it fills the set window size, classifies the window, and then send alerts based on the outputs, all done in a sequential manner. The buffer is then emptied and the process repeated again and again. All the samples that were occurring during the classification window won't be captured, hence your system potentially missing out on some important samples. That's where continuous classification comes in. In this case, you want your system to capture audio samples and analyze them at the same time without missing out on any sample. And this is not limited to audio alone, as it applies to motion recognition and other high-frequency sensor applications. To achieve this, Edge Impulse utilizes two techniques, model slicing and averaging. In model slicing technique, the sample is divided into slices, then sequentially inference in a FIFO manner using a sliding window. The slices can be two, four, or any other appropriate number. For example, when we want to inference a one-second slice, we move the window up 0.5 seconds, then perform inference again. This means we will do twice as much as computation with some overlap, but it will help prevent audio and words from getting lost in between the windows. Let's talk about averaging. The averaging techniques helps us filter out false positives. For example, the word yesterday shouldn't be classified as either yes or no. When the yes buffer enters the FIFO, it will surely classify a yes. But as the rest of the words enters, the classified value for yes will drop quickly. We just have to make sure we don't react on peak values. Therefore, a moving average filter averages the classified output to flatten the peaks. To have a valid yes, we now need multiple high-rated classifications. Let's move to our demo. In this demo, we are going to build and run a yes-no keyword spotting model on an Arduino Nano 33 billions to demonstrate continuous classification. Continuous inferencing mode is automatically enabled for any impulses that use audio on both Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense and the ST IoT Discovery Kit. An Arduino sketch that demonstrates continuous audio sampling is part of the Arduino library deployment option, as we will see. So to start, you'll need an Edge Impulse account. To get one, you just need to go to edgeimpulse.com and sign up. It's completely free for developers. You don't need any credit card. So after signing up, you'll be free to start building your first TinyML project. 
So for this particular demo, I'm going to call the demo yes, no keyword. And um, the first page that they're going to land on is the dashboard page, this one here. And uh, the dashboard page gives you an overview about your project. It's where you can add readme's to make your, to give more details about your project. You can make your project public or private, depending on you. You can also see the number of devices connected to your project and also the amount of data collected. Another cool feature that you can utilize uh, Edge Impulse with that you can activate in the dashboard is the collaborators feature. You can add up to three additional people to come contribute to your project. You, from the dashboard, you can also see your project ID, which uh, you can use the Edge Impulse forum in case you need any assistance with your project. The next thing is devices. So basically devices are devices that you want to connect your project to help you collect some data set to train your model or even to test the model that you have trained to evaluate its performance in real time on a deployed device. So there is a variety of uh, devices that you can choose to connect your project to. Uh, the first one is uh, to connect a fully supported development board. These are uh, boards that are fully supported by the Agent Pulse co-engineering team, whereby you can use uh, them to collect data sets and even uh, deploy your model without needing more modification to your uh, to your firmware. The second one is a uh, mobile phone. A mobile phone basically has an accelerometer, camera, and a microphone that uh, you can use to collect a data set. So for this particular project here, for this particular demo, we are using like uh, audio data. So this is the option that I chose. I chose like a mobile phone and I used it to collect some uh, data samples for uh, this project. You can also use your computer or uh, you can also use uh, data from uh, any device with the data folder. Uh, the next option is uh, you can use uh, the app the upload portal to upload some data if you have some data already in your computer. And you can also uh, integrate with your cloud platform to fetch data to uh, to your project so that you can build uh, your impulse from there. Another cool feature recently released is the data sources, whereby it helps you build automated data pipelines for your project. With this feature, you can um, build uh, pipe, data pipelines with uh, Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, or any other cloud platform that is compatible with uh, S3. Next, we can move over now to data acquisition to have a view at our data set. From here, you can see that we have collected eight minutes, four seconds uh, of uh, audio, uh, split into three classes, yes, no, and unknown, which has been further split into 80% uh, for training and 20% uh, for testing. From here, there are some other things that we might decide to do with your data. For example, invoking the data explorer, which can help us uh, have a full complete view of all the data in our project that can help us um, label and label data and even identify our clients such as this. After you are satisfied with the data set, we'll now move to impulse design. From here is now where we're going to build our um, ML application. So we'll start by putting like the input block, the pre-processing block, and the learning block. So for the input block, it has already been chosen for us, which is a time series data. For the pre-processing block, there is a variety of options to choose from. Uh, from audio MFCC, audio MFE, spectrogram, and others. So if you don't know the best one to choose, you can always choose the one with the star. And that's the uh, procedure that we're going to follow here. So for now, we're going to choose the audio MFCC and we'll move to the learning block and follow the same procedure. Uh, for our case, we want to differentiate between three classes. We can either choose a transfer learning keyword spotting uh, block or the uh, classification keras block. So for this case, let's go with um, keras classification block and uh, save our impulse. 
From there, we'll be taken to MFCC to configure some uh, parameters. Uh, you can always leave everything by default by just saving parameters and uh, start generating features, which will be used uh, by the ML block. After we have our features ready, we'll now move to neural network classifier block. So here we'll set the number of training cycles, which is the number of epochs, the learning rates, and also we can adjust the validation block. So here I'm going to leave everything by default and I will immediately start training. After 100 epochs, you can see our model was able to achieve 96.3 accuracy which is not that bad. We can also see the individual performances of all the three classes in this confusion matrix here. This performance can further be increased by, let's say, adding some more data and some more device data. We can also see like um, how the device performance. For this case, uh, we have an inference time of one millisecond, um, RAM usage of uh, five kilobytes and uh, flash usage of uh, 34.6 kilobytes, which is just enough to run on our Arduino Nano 33B license. Before deployment, we can move to model testing to evaluate our model. So we'll just select classify all and see the results with the test data. Test data is data that we set aside, the 20% that we set aside to evaluate the performance of our model, which is not part of the training set. Here you can see we were able to achieve a test accuracy of 95.73%, which is not that bad. So from here, we can directly move to deployment. So since we are deploying to an Arduino Nano 33B license, we have two options. We can either choose the Arduino library or um, we can choose the Arduino Nano 33B license um, pre-compiled firmware. So for this case, let's go with the Arduino library. So we'll select Arduino library, then start building. This automatically download an Arduino library that we can um, import to the Arduino IDE and upload to the Arduino Nano 33B license. Now we'll move over to our Arduino IDE, go to sketch. We go to include library, add a zip library, go to our downloaded um, library from the Jimpa Studio, select it, then import it. After that, we'll see a notification that the library has been added to our libraries. Now we'll go to File, Examples. We maneuver to the library. Here it is. From here, you'll realize a lot of files uh, for, for different Arduino platforms. Uh, we have the Nano BLE, we have the Nick License, and also the Potenta. So to choose continuous classification, we'll go to the BLE ones and choose microphone continuous this is the file that we are going to upload if we don't want continuous classification we'll otherwise go for this one BLE nano BLE 33 cents microphone but for now we'll go with this open it and upload it this might take long depending on your computer now that our impulse is now running locally it's now time to test it on the serial monitor. Yes, no. Yes, no. No. Yes. Yes, no. And that's how to implement continuous classification with an Arduino Nano 33B license. For more information about continuous classification, please visit our documentation at docs.agimpulse.com. I want to thank IoT Central for hosting this workshop. You can find more workshops and Edge Impulse micro sessions at iotcentral.io, where this video will also be available on demand. If you have any questions about Edge Impulse, 
please post them at the forum.agimpulse.com. Thank you and see you again next time. Bye.